look on our students to the 3.2 polynomial equations in one variable. Let's first start by recalling the zero product property. We use this a lot in solving equations. We'll see if it works in inequalities as well. If a times b equals zero, then one of the two must be zero. Then a equals zero or b equals zero. Very important rule for solving equations. Now let's uh, try it on an inequality. x plus 3 times x minus 5 is greater than 0. What we often see students do is take x plus 3 greater than 0 or x plus minus 5 is greater than 0. And they apply the zero product property to this. With amusing consequences, we get x is greater than negative 3 or x is greater than 5. So that's all the points basically to the right of negative 3. But if I check Um, some other points here, like uh, zero, zero certainly in there, zero, check, x equals zero, zero plus three times zero minus five is negative 15. False. This technique does not work, because the zero product property is about equations. If you want to make it a uh, property about inequalities, you have to do something like this. If a times b is greater than 0, then a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0, or a is less than 0 and b is less than 0. And that just becomes ludicrous, especially if you look at three factors. So this technique is junk. Junk, 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 junk. Can't ben, that's a balanced lunch. Can't emphasize it enough. This is junk. You can't solve it that way. And keep that in mind. Now, you might say, why did I bring up the zero product property? Because there is a way to use it to find out the zeros and then find out what's going on between them. So now let's see how we can do it in terms of a graph. We're trying to do times x minus 5 greater than 0. Here's a way you can visually do it. Think of it as y equals x plus 3 times x minus 5. And that's why I have graphed here, the parabola. The parabola will be positive out here. It will be negative in here. So x plus 3 times x minus 5 is greater than 0 when we have x values to the left of negative 3 or to the right of 5. So there you go. There's a nice quick visual answer. x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 5. That's how you can use this as a function, as a quadratic function, to figure out when this is going to be positive or negative. So conversely, what if I ask the question, as long as you get the picture here, of x plus 3 times x minus 5 is less than 0? Well, now that's going to be those points in here, where the y coordinates go underneath the x axis and are negative. So therefore, we get negative 3 is less than x is less than 5 for that answer. So different question, right? Different question, different answer. Now, don't think of this as just like absolute value greater than or absolute value less than. Because polynomials will have a lot more variation than your absolute value v-shapes. So look carefully at the graph. Now, here's another technique if you don't know the graph. So, or let's look at our graph to solve this one first. Solving x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, so first I've got a sketch. And you could do this. I did this on GeoGebra. You could do it on your own very easily, going through the roots of 1 negative 1 and 0. So we got 1 here, I'm sorry, negative 2 and 3 are the three roots. And we want to know when is y less than 0, because now we've got a less than there. So that's going to be in here and here. And that corresponds on the x-axis to these points and the points in between here. So it simply becomes x is less than negative 2 or 1 is less than x is less than 3. Just by knowing the shape of the graph, you can quickly decide this inequality. Now, two things that are important to know. Notice we are using the zero product property because you have to first find the zero. When is this whole expression equal to zero? Those were the roots we came up with here. Now, I didn't include them because they actually make it equal to zero. If it had been less than or equal to, then we would have included them. 
Here's another technique if you don't want to make the graph or if you don't know how to make the graph, like we're going to see with some rational functions but before we get to graph them, you can analyze what's happened with the binomial factors. Each one of these binomial factors is a line, and we just do a sign chart. That is, x minus 1, if I were to plug a number into here, and to the left of negative 2, it would make this negative, and then stay negative, and then at 1 it becomes 0, and for points greater than 1, this is my x-axis now, for points greater than 1, it becomes positive. x plus 2 is negative until you get to negative 2, which makes it 0, and then after negative 2, anything bigger than negative 2 will make the x plus 2 positive. x minus 3 is negative until you get up to 3. Then it's 0 there, and everything bigger than 3 will make that positive. So now you can multiply the three expressions just with these signs. Negative times negative times negative is negative. Negative times positive times negative is positive. Positive times positive times negative is negative. Positive times positive times positive is positive. So we want to know when is it less than zero. So we focus on this point at when is it less than zero, so we want to know when the whole product is negative. So we come back to our graph up here, and we put open circles around these, and shade in here, and shade in like this. And I just like putting the x in there. x is less than negative 2. 1 is less than x is less than 3. There you go. x is less than negative 2, or 1 is less than x is less than 3. I believe that's what we got before. Yeah. Finally, here's the brute force technique. And some people prefer this because it doesn't require any charts or graph, but it requires a lot of arithmetic. So let's see now. First, find the zeros and test points in between the roots to see if they make the whole expression positive or negative. So the zeros are at 2, 1, and 3. I'm going to put open circles around those because we're not trying to make it greater than, less than or equal to 0, so we don't want to include the zeros. And now we test a point in each one of these sections here. So let's test 0. Test x equals 0. Well, you get negative 1 times 2 times negative 3. That's 6. Is that less than 0? No. So that means this doesn't work in here. So let's test x equals 2. So you get 1 times 4 times negative 1. It's negative 4 is less than 0. Yes! So that means 2 works, and it convinces all its friends to also work. Everything else connected to this, because it's a polynomial function. Once it changes sign, it's going to stay changed until you get to another 0. So all that works in there. Now you can test x equals 4. And, you know, sometimes during this test, you can just sit there. Instead of actually giving the numbers, you can just say the sign. 4 minus 1 is 3, so it's positive times positive times positive. That's all positive. Is that less than 0? No. And over here, we can test x equals negative 3. That'll make a negative times a negative times a negative. That's three negatives multiplied together. That makes negative. Is that less than zero? Yes. So negative three works along with all its friends on this section of the division. So again, we end up with x is less than negative two, or one is less than x is less than three. Flange out, out. It's got its greens, it's got its fruit, it's got P and J. Protein. Right? Yeah. Protein. Okay.